All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to be featuring a highly requested ship, of course, the Mines. Uh, Mines is obviously a really wonderful ship at Tier 8, but today I'm going to give it a fresh look. As you know, for the Fresh Look series, we do cover premium ships. I play one game in them and basically re-review them in 2022 or, well, soon 2023, and just give them an updated review. Um, are they still good in the current year? Are they worth buying? Whatever. But I think um, we should start off, before I start, um, I should just let you know, please um, comment in the comments what ship you would like to see next in this series, please. And I would greatly appreciate the support. But anyway, so let's start off with the armor layout here for the mines. As you know, it is a light cruiser, so it does get light cruiser armor. By that, I mean it gets 25 millimeter armor around the place it sure does get a tw 27 millimeter deck and a 40 millimeter icebreaker but that doesn't mean it's tanky at all it has 25 millimeter armor around the place and even though you do have a turtle back as you can see here of 40 you do end up getting citadeled if you play it poorly so do be careful when you're playing the mines um another comparison i just want to make really quick is hipper or sorry prince oigen really but even Hipper, they both have it. Um, they have 27 millimeter armor, as you can see, all around the place. So that's because they are heavy cruisers. Mines is a light cruiser. So even though 25 millimeters might not seem like a lot, it actually is quite a fair amount. Because at this tier, you have a lot of battleships which have 380 millimeter guns, which means they wouldn't be able to overmatch Prince Eugen's or Hippers, but they can overmatch you in Mines. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but I think we should continue on to the commander build, which is, um, I'm going to use Lugins. I'm just going to use my Hindenburg build. I'm not going to specifically build a captain for mines, um, but I'm just going to use my Hindenburg captain because it's a premium ship. I can drag it for free. So we have Grease the Gears, Gun Feeder, Priority Target, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, Concealment Expert, Adrenaline Rush, and Top Grade Gunner. If I wanted to change something out of mines, in, you know, instead of a Hindenburg build, I would remove Superintendent, put it into Last Stand, and Demolition Expert for Mines. Um, but if you're going to use your Hindenburg Captain, I think that's fine. In terms of my equipment, I'm using Concealment System Mod 1, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Hydroacoustic Search Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. And in terms of the exterior, this is what the camo looks like for Mines. Um, as you can see, it looks really nice. It's similar to Hindenburg's permanent camo. You also have the alternate version of the camo, which looks pretty interesting too, but I prefer the stock one. We also have the Mines B now. For those of you wondering, it will be available this year for the uh, Black Friday event. Here is what the camo looks like actually for Mines B, which is pretty cool, obviously. Um, very nice, I guess. They always make these B camos very nice. And there's also one more camo I wanted to show you. If I can actually turn it on. I don't know which one it's going to be. It's entertainment. Nope. Uh, painting. Nope. Um, wow. It, wait, watch. Where is it? Can I not? Oh! This one. <laughs> there you go. So this one is the Cross of Dorn camo. Which, um, yeah, I mean, it's Cross of Dorn camo. There you go. Um, it's a bit weird, I guess, but if that's your thing, there it is. You also have this. Um, this was the Cross of Dorn, which is also a Mines clone. So we have three Mines. We have three Mines. These aren't different to Mines in any way, by the way. Mines, Mines B, and Cross of Dorn are all the same ship, same stats, same everything. It's pretty much just Mines sold and sold again. All right, so another thing. I think um, I did it in the Gibraltar video, and I'm going to do it in this video as well is instead of covering the statistics of the ship in the middle of the game, I'm actually going to cover the statistics of the ship now in terms of the characteristics of the ship because this was a requested thing by a lot of you in the comments. Um, please show the stats in the port so then in the game you can pretty much just talk about the game and what you think about the ship straight away. So if you want to skip to the game, you can always skip. I'm going to keep the video chaptered. Um, you just skip the game one. Uh, sorry, just game and you can just skip to there. But whoever's interested in looking at the stats of the ship, um, here you go. So survivability, we have 46,100 HP and a 22% torpedo protection hit or bulge. Um, so 22% and 46,100 HP. That's with survivability expert. We also have 150 millimeter guns, as you know, light cruiser guns with a six second reload, which is really good. And you have 12 guns on mines. 
that's pretty good as well. Um, but most importantly for German cruisers, especially, I mean, I mean, all of them, but most importantly for the light cruisers, as you know, other light cruisers of other nations must take IFHE. Well, most of them must take IFHE to actually pen the battleships at same tier. By that, I mean 32 millimeters of pen. But as you can see on the mines here, 150 millimeters, you get 38 millimeters of pen without IFHE. So you don't need to take IFHE to pen 38 millimeters, which is really useful for you because then you can pen quite a lot of battleships, even American battleships with 38 millimeters. So that is very good, of course. Um, in terms of the gun range, you get 17.5, which is really good at tier 8. For torpedoes, you actually get 4x4. Four four. Um, normally, Hipper gets 3x4, so Hipper gets 12. Um, but here we have 4x4, four four, so we have 16 torps, 8 per side, which is quite good, useful, actually, sometimes. I wouldn't say too useful. Most times, you don't really get to use the torps in the mines because the armor is so bad, you don't actually want to get into range of that stuff. But you could, if you are in that range, and you are in a stressful situation, you could use the torps, yes. Depth charges, I mean, you get six depth charges, but I do believe they are ship-based ASW. Yes, they are. That means they're kind of miserable because you do have to drive over the enemy submarine to actually do damage to it if it's underwater. Um, another thing is the AA. I mean, it's okay. I don't think it's anything to write home about, especially since I'm running hydro. Um, I do recommend hydro because it is six kilometer hydro over the DFA. I think the, the hydro is more useful in most situations than the DFA actually is. In terms of maneuverability, um, not the fastest ship in the game, 33.6 knots, it's quite slow actually, but it makes up for it for obviously other reasons. But here you go, 33.6 knots, pretty slow. And then you also have 12 kilometer concealment, that's with a full concealment build. Um, obviously that's really bad concealment for a light cruiser, but this isn't a light cruiser in where you fight destroyers and stuff. This is a light cruiser and where you're DPMing enemies down. So it is okay that it has 12 kilometer concealment because it's balanced, right? So there you go. Um, but that's about it. I think we should go into a game with the mines and talk more about the ship. All right. So here we are in a tier 10 match on Haven with the mines. I am using mines B actually, but it is the same exact ship as normal mines. So don't fear. It is the same exact ship as mines. Um, but I wanted to play mines B. <laughs> well, no real reason, to be honest. They're literally clones, so it literally doesn't matter. I'm even using the normal camo, so you guys don't get too confused. So, we're going to go to the C flank, to be honest. I do prefer that side, especially in a light cruiser, against the matchup tier 10. Um, but, really and truly, this, this is a coin flip, because we got a coin flip spawn. Um, should we go left or right? Pretty much a random guess, really. But there's also less cruisers on the seaside, as you can see, so maybe we can go help out. Um, our primary issue would be the fact that if the enemy battleships do run away, which is totally possible in a tier 10 game, because tier 10s normally don't play too aggressive, they normally do tend to run away, this could be a quite a hard game for us. Um, especially since there's a Colbert, so there's something to dumpster us, really. Moskva's hard to deal with for us. Hindenburg, which is pretty much us, just better. Um, we have to be careful to that. Ohio, Alsace, Musashi, Soyuz. They all overmatch us everywhere, even Bismarck. There's only one submarine and only one DD. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, but obviously, we can return the fire to these battleships. We're just going to have to be really careful with it. And I don't know why the Zhao is leaving the flank he did spawn on. So I'm going to click a 5 on him and hope he turns around. But no promises. So let's go in this general direction here and see if we can pretty much output some damage on something. Would be the goal. Alright, so we're kind of in range now. There is an issue, obviously, but we are spotted right now. There's probably a destroyer out wide. Um, but we can't really do anything about it. Um, we get outspotted, obviously, our concealment's 12 kilometers. Really bad concealment. And we don't have anything to spot their destroyer. We have a 6 cam Hydro, sure. But we're not going to get into 6 cam of a destroyer when there's an Altaz Moskva Soyuz on this flank. So we're going to play a bit more cautious. Passive Arch. Kronstadt actually died for his blood. As you can see, he died in a super aggressive position. Is what it is. I don't know why you would ever go there in a Kronstadt inside B cap, basically. It's kind of risky, no? That's what I'm wondering. Um, 
So yeah, there is a submarine or DD out. No, it's not a submarine. It's a Velos. Velos out here. There's a Velos out there. So he is permalighting us, but he's probably gonna end up torping my GK. To be honest, I don't think he's gonna end up torping me because, well, GK is running it into the island position, which I think is probably the safest bet for him. But he must have that Hydra running or he's gonna suffer. Um, let's start outputting some damage on the spotted targets. Finally, the targets actually did get spotted. So we should be able to output some damage on them. You do have to be a bit cautious with mines because obviously it's not fast. And obviously it's really squishy. And the stealth is really bad. Those are its main weaknesses, really. The squishiness, the, um, the speed... And the concealment. They're all pr they're all pretty bad about the ship. Um, they're not even like trying to be good stats. They're pretty bad stats for the ship. But obviously it is made up for with its main gun artillery. The guns are extremely good for the tier. They're pretty good. I mean obviously they're similar to the tier 6 guns. I mean Nuremberg guns are also really good for tier 6 to be honest. Um, a lot of people say the Nuremberg is a really bad ship. Um, but actually it's... Quite good. Obviously, it's really squishy, and that's its weakness. But otherwise, the guns are incredible, actually, on it. Because, they, I mean, well, for one, they're the same guns as this, almost. And they actually do also retain that pen, that extra pen that Germans get. So, it's very useful in that regard. The nice thing about having pen and no need for IFHE for it is you have your fire chance stock, right? So, you have 9% fire chance with fire flag and whatever. So, that's pretty good. Now, this is a pretty risky spot for me, to be honest. Like, the battleships are gonna shoot me here, because, well, I'm in the open. There's not much other places we can be. We could rotate around the map, and it will take us a bit of time, but I think we're gonna have to do it very shortly here. Because I don't think this spot is really tenable, especially if the Alsace instantly dies here, which he is actually quite doing so... Obviously not up to his choice, he just is dying, so we have to plan around it very quickly. We got a permafire there that is permanent because he DCP'd my friend's fire here. Actually, is it? I'm pretty double permafire. Yeah, he is burning double perma now. That should farm him out pretty quickly. Okay, he's down to 3k. He's probably gonna burn out to be honest. Unless my submarine has something to say about it. Um yeah, 1k damage, he's on double fire, and he already healed. I'm gonna cross the map now. We're up to 46k, which isn't too bad. I could actually cross the map, or I could fight the Soyuz here, but the Soyuz is gonna keep reversing bow on. So it's probably gonna take me forever. Plus the enemy team is coming towards us on the other side. So I'm just gonna skip this part um, for you guys, and so you guys don't get bored to death. Alright, so the, ve uh, the, the Soyuz is in range. He ran it into range. Hopefully he stays spotted, which is pretty unlikely. He did shoot me back, so this is actually pretty scary. Because my angle is so bad. Okay. Still alive. We do need him spotted, though, if possible. Because right now I'm perma-spotted. And he's not sp Oh, he's really low, probably, actually, now. There's the Lugins, 140 shell hits. You can pretty much get that every game in this ship. It's super easy to get. So is Wait, he didn't lose too much HP to the submarine. I'm very surprised, actually. But yeah, you can get Lugins on the ship, like, proc'd every game. If you, you know, get 140 shell hits, which is not hard. As you can see, we're only on 60k damage, and we have 140 shell hits. How are we gonna spot the Soyuz, though, I wonder? I'm gonna actually hydro here because there's a Velos behind me. He's actually in hydro range, which is super surprising to me. Um, maybe not to you guys, I don't know. But to me, that was pretty surprising. The fact that he ran into range. Soyuz is about to shoot me and I'm full broadside to him because I'm trying to fight this destroyer right now. Which is going to be really bad for me, I must say. If he does actually end up unloading on me. But let's hope he doesn't. Kill the Velos here. And back on the Soyuz. We're down to 15k HP ourselves, so we're gonna have to be a bit careful here, especially since the Soyuz is running out at us. We're gonna try run away as fast as possible, but I think the Soyuz is definitely gonna be able to shoot us. Yeah, he is, he is. 
Well, we probably will die here, but as you can see, the AP also, something I didn't mention, is incredibly strong um, for a light cruiser. It does quite a lot of damage, so you should be using it on broadside battleships or broadside cruisers. If they are broadside at a relative range, that is decent for you. Um, that makes it comfortable for you to hit them and that they're going to stay broadside. And um, the Soy is it shoot us. He didn't do too much damage to us. Hopefully, it seems like he's switching to the lion actually, which is really good for us. Because if he leaves me alone, I could actually end up killing him for free. I'm actually going to sail the other way here. So I'm not in the same direction as lion to try to discourage him from actually ending up shooting me if possible. Because I don't want this guy to shoot me because I want to live if possible, guys. I know living is pretty important. So... Um, if we can live here and I'll put some more damage on the Soyuz and actually live after the Soyuz dies, it would be really, really beneficial. Not only for me, but for my team, because as you can see, this is a really close game. So we're supposed to try to live and, well, help the team win if possible. So we're going to try kill the Soyuz here. We're doing quite a decent amount of damage with AP, except that Salvo, we got 600. Um, we do end up killing him, which is really nice. And now we're going to turn around completely again and we're going to go towards the Bismarck. And once again, I must skip this part so you guys don't get turbo bored to death. All right, so here's the Bismarck. Um, he's in range finally. So we're going to be able to output some damage. We are winning via the caps, which is really nice. We do have a ship disadvantage. I have to say we probably also have an HP disadvantage. But um, I think we're going to make up for it right now because we're going to kill the Bismarck. That's going to give us a 37k lead here almost as long as Ariwami doesn't take too much damage from his secondaries. Um, also, there's a Johan in range. He must be careful about. Um, the gun angles, also something I didn't mention is they're not actually that good. They're okay. They're usable. Especially if you're playing at longer ranges, they're kind of usable because you can actually angle out in time. But if you're at close range trying to use all your guns, you are going to have not a great time, I would say. I'm um, playing with the mines sometimes. Hello, Bismarck, don't kill me. I only want to kill you instead. Please, thank you. We also have to keep walking away from the Johan because we're trying to minimize the time for him to actually kill us. Um, I would love to switch to Johan here because the Bismarck is going to go out of my range. So I am because the Bismarck is out of my range pretty much in seconds here. So I'm going to switch to the Johan. Hopefully they can finish off the Bismarck. The lion did die, but as long as we trade the Bismarck and this Johan, if we kill both, it's kind of okay. Alright, Bismarck died to Des Moines, that's perfect. Now we'll output some damage on this Johan, we got a fire. As you know, Dutch cruisers have 60 second fires, which is pretty interesting. To be honest, I don't think that's a good idea, but there it is. You have 60 second fires. Um, we should be able to kill this guy. He just DCP'd and now we just got a permafire on him. So that's going to burn him for 60 seconds. Or let's say 50 or 45. Maybe he has something built into anti-fires. Maybe a module or two. But he is going to take a lot of fire damage. That's for sure. And what's worse than the damage itself actually from the fire. Is the fact that you're perma spotted the entire time. Plus 2 kilometers with the fire. So yeah. The Des Moines does actually end up going down to the Johan, which is not too good for us. But I have to say the Johan should die to my fire there. No promises, so I'm gonna try shoot a shell or two to make sure he dies. But he did die before my shells even landed. Once again, guys, I'm going to skip this part so you don't suffer. <laughs> because I'm gonna have to cross the map once again in the mines. Alright, so we just got spotted. Oh, we just got spotted from here. So we just got spotted from there. There's a submarine there. Um, oh, so honestly, we just have to live. But really and truly, that is not just going to win us the game. Because there's still a submarine on the enemy team. He can cap, he can do whatever. And there's still two cruisers, tier 10 ones, and a tier 9 battleship, which is pretty much a tier 10 battleship on the enemy team. So I don't think we're going to win by just sitting and living here. So I think we're going to actually have to end up killing the enemy ships, which might be pretty difficult, to be honest with you, um, especially since it's a Moskva. Um, I do, the Moskva is the hardest ship to kill here, to be honest, for me. I think I can kill the Hindenburg. He's 22k HP. I think I could, could probably burn down the Musashi if I played behind a rock with submarine spotting potentially. But against the Moskva, it's going to be extremely hard to kill. 
And I think the game is honestly going to end up in a loss, I must say. So, that is the unfortunate situation with the situation we have. Um, I know that sounded really dumb, I'm sorry. But... GG. Pretty sure it's over, to be honest, but we'll try to get some extra damage here at the end. We only have 14k HP left, so we're probably going to be able to take maybe one Musashi Salvo, two Moskva Salvos, and a Hindenburg Salvo, and then we'll die instantly. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, let me just sail here again. Sorry, I'm not going to skip this part, I guess, because it's kind of like the end, I guess. Nothing much to do. Um, some games are just unwinnable like this, and that's, I mean, it is what it is. It's a tier 10 game, we got 4 kills, we're definitely trying to win the game, obviously. We played on this flank, the C flank, the entire time. We, hel we helped hold the cap via the damage output we had on various ships. We also, I mean, I would say we tanked, but we didn't really tank. We only have 750,000 potential damage, which isn't too bad for a light cruiser, but obviously, I mean, we didn't power tank or anything. We didn't do any of that thing. And obviously, for those of you thinking we're going to win by just sitting here and living, um, as you can see, they're going to overtake us in points, especially since they have all four caps now, at least contested. Um, they have two gaining points and two contested, so they're pretty much going to overtake us any second now. And there's a whole two minutes and 30 seconds left before the game does end. So, sitting and living will not win us this game. GG. Alright, so... We ended up doing 157,000 damage, 450 shell hits, 9 defended, and 4 kills with 14 fires, and 9 resets at the end, and 1 in-cap. Team score, we ended up getting 1.6k base XP, we were bottom tier in a tier 10 match, and um, this is pretty much what we got. Um, honestly, it's still a pretty decent match, to be honest, for a tier 8 ship in a tier 10 game. Um, in terms of damage output, we did 58k to the Soyuz, 42k to the Alsace, 20k to the Johan, 10k to the Velos, those are our kills, and then we did some chip damage to each chip at the end. We also took 46,000 damage ourselves, which is our max HP pool, because we died. And, as you can see, our damage output is pretty much almost all HE, and then we did 22k damage to the broadside Soyuz, which is pretty good, as you can see. We output a 22k damage to him, which was pretty nice um, damage, obviously, for a light cruiser. So yes, the AP is pretty good on broadside things. You don't get to see a lot of broadside sometimes, but when you do, you can output some pretty good AP damage. In terms of credits and XP, this is with no boosters, um, except for personal merit. Um, we have 671,000 credits, 4.5k XP, 500 free XP, and 6,000 commander XP. In terms of my commander build again, I have Grease the Gears, Gun Feeder, Priority Target, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, Concealment Expert, Adrenaline Rush, and Top Grade Gunner. In terms of equipment, I have Concealment System Mod 1, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Hydro Search Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. And one more thing, I will show you the statistics I have in the ship, that's not the texture, we go on Profile, Summary, and then if we scroll down somewhere to the mines, if it loads, Let's see. Let's see if we can find this. All right, so, well, mine's B. I only played one game in it. 157k average, only one game in it. But let me show you my other two mines as I have, if I can find them. So, Cross of Dorn is another one I have. Six games, 100% win rate, as you can see. 132k average damage in the Cross of Dorn, which isn't too bad over six games. But if I can find my mines somewhere, and I don't know where it is. Here it is. So mines, over 40 games, I have a 73% win rate and 154k average damage. Um, obviously, it's a really good damage dealer. So there you go. This is the mines. Um, very good damage dealer, 154, 154k average. Um, but yeah, so I would say it's between all of these. I mean, as you saw with the Cross of Dorn, I have 134k average. This one's 154. And the Mines B, I only got 157. So it's pretty much, I would say, on average, you should get 130,000 at least average damage, which is extremely high for a tier 8 cruiser. Those are like tier 9, tier 10 cruiser numbers on certain cruisers. So 130,000 is pretty good. But um, obviously, um, it is not an easy ship to play. One more thing I want to show you before I tell you my opinion on the ship again. Um, I want to show you the price of the ship and where to buy it if you do want it. 
Um, you go into the armory, you click here a German cruiser, whatever, and you have the mines at 11,300 doubloons, which is the same exact price as Prince Eugen. And in terms of the premium shop price, again, it's probably the same exact price as Prince Eugen. But if we go to ships, we go tier 8, German cruisers. Uh, mines is 37 euros and 17 cents, which is the same price as a Prince Eugen. But that leads me on to the end of the video where I review the ship and say, is it good or is it not good? Obviously, it's a really strong ship. I think it's one of the stronger tier 8 light cruisers in the game. I think it's a wonderful design um, for me. I love gunboats, obviously, or gu gun-focused uh, light cruisers. So this is definitely one of those ones that if you're an experienced open water player and know how to play cruisers relatively well, you're going to enjoy it quite a lot. Now, the question you might be wondering is, let's say you're somewhat inexperienced and you don't really know how to play cruisers too much, should you get the mines? I don't think so, to be honest. I think you should practice on maybe some other ships, um, maybe grind to the hipper. Even though the hipper has worse damage output than the mines, guys, you have to understand the, the hipper is, well, a tier 8 um, German cruiser. And even though it does, it has better armor and worse guns, at least it's gonna somewhat help you teach you, you know, the play style, right? The open water play style uh, of the mines. Um, now, obviously, Hipper is tankier, but Hipper also has worse damage output, right? Because the guns reload every 10.5 seconds and they're 203s, whatever, and you only have 8 guns instead of 12. But... Um, I don't think you should get mines as a new player or or someone who's completely inexperienced at the game because you're not going to have an easy time playing it. I'm going to be honest. Um, the concealment plus the maneuverability plus the bad gun angles plus the um, armor is going to make it a nightmare for you to play. Obviously, the guns are incredible. I love the guns. I love the ship. As you saw, my stats are incredible in the ship. But damage, I mean, I mean, the, the actual survivability of the ship is pretty minimal. So if you're not that experienced at the game, I wouldn't recommend you get it. Um, another one, if you want to get it, I already made a video on it, um, is the Prince Eugen. I think that one would be more in tune for a newer player, especially if you really want a German premium to help you farm some um, Commander XP and stuff. I think Prince Eugen is wonderful. It fits the line very well. It has a heal as well over Hipper. It has a heal for si slightly worse DPM. Um, obviously, the reload is 2.5 seconds worse than um, Hipper, but you also get the heal, so it's so much easier to play for most players. But yeah, if you want a for for a newer or or inexperienced player, um, Prince Eugen is a much better pick, I think, for most players. But for an experienced player, someone who's ready to play open water cruisers and is comfortable with them, definitely look at the mines. It's a wonderful ship pick. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Um, obviously, I do love the mines, so I really wanted to feature it. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this fresh look. Please do let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it, if I left anything out. Um, if you want, if you have any feedback for the videos on how to improve them, and um, if you can, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Um, if you disliked it, leave a dislike, I guess, and then also leave a comment if possible. Try to feed feedback and stuff, or if you like the video, whatever, or or whatever ship you want to see next in the fresh look or the tech trials video. Obviously, please leave it in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. Um, obviously. But that's pretty much it, guys. I hope to see you in the next video, and big fan.